Hello, I'm Steve. We're here today, we're gonna to do a safety video with our manual squeeze chutes. Uh, what we have right here is our 87 series chute. So I'll just start. We have a head holder and we've gone over this before, but this here release pin, you wanna make sure and get, uh, have enough clearance there. I would say a minimum of a quarter of an inch. Otherwise, it, uh, if you got a big animal, there might be enough flex because that's what releases the locks inside here. And uh, if it, it's, it's not often that it happens on a head holder, but if it's grabbing too hard, we uh, recommend WD-40 dry lube. And that's what we use on this shaft and this shaft, which I'll explain in a minute, and the shaft on the squeeze. So when you got an animal caught, and if you got a big bull in here, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on here. I would just stay away from this handle. You wanna be just aware of that. And then you work on your handle, lift to release, and then you release your animal. You'll notice this chute is off the ground a little bit, sort of simulating load bars. So if you're a shorter person, or if you're an older person, you might notice a fair bit of shoulder strain over time. So we do offer an extendable version of this handle so that your handle, your hand is down here and you don't have as much strain on your shoulder and you got more leverage. But if you order that extendable handle, oh, I just wanna make you aware of it, that handle gets pretty close to this squeeze handle and you wanna be, if your handle is right at the front, you wanna be aware of your knuckles just that's something to be aware of. So this slide slides freely all the way to the back. It can be used from both sides. So this side, you just have a handle. So there's something to be aware of here. So we've made this handle on an arc so that it doesn't, it tries to, uh, we've tried to minimize the swing here, but it's still something to be aware of, especially if you give that door a real good jerk. You can see, you can, uh, you can hit somebody on there. And the other thing is, you need to make sure that you use this yellow handle for shutting a door because if you're a bigger guy you might just grab here and push it but you're going to slam it there and uh, you're liable to bust your knuckles on that roller if you're not careful so that's the yellow handle is there for a reason you need to be uh, aware of the anybody standing on the other side or you could uh, if you open it up in a hurry you can clock clock them pretty good there so but if you, got a, if you got wild cattle, and they could be coming in there at a very rapid rate, just open up that head gate just wider than their ears. Otherwise, you're, you're liable to miss them. And at one point, at some point, you're, it's, a, it's a pretty much a guarantee you're gonna miss an animal. So there's a couple of things to, uh, to watch for. One of, the, one of them is, I'll just show you how I prefer to run this head gate. I don't usually run my head gate like this total personal preference, but I usually run my head gate like this because it just puts less strain if you're doing a lot of head during the day. But the other thing is, when an animal's head is about here, and you'll get used to this, you'll after a while, you'll barely, you'll barely notice it, but don't wait till the animal's head is here and then close the head gate because you're almost sure to catch it on the shoulders. And if you catch it on the shoulders, there's no way of stopping that animal it's going to wedge through till it catches on its hips and then you're going to get what you call hip lock now if, if this head you know, under tremendous amounts of pressure and if your head gate is really dry you, you may have it so that you actually can't release the head gate so i'll just point out a quick tip to help you out in, a, in an emergency situation like that So this here is just a basic pry bar I pulled out of the, the shop. You can use any simple kind of a bar, even a big sc screwdriver. If you come to the other side, but you stick your pry bar in here, go just under the curve of the outside roller and up into the locking cell, you'll see the cavity there, and just give it a snap. And once one head gate releases, it'll just pop it open. That's just a quick tip because if you get an animal caught on the hips and she's thrashing around, that's actually a very high stress situation. So you want to know what to do. The other thing is, <clears throat> before you use your chute, it's not a bad idea to test it. 
The first thing that I like to do to know if your head gate's working, it's a very simple test, but it works quite well. I use just a, a used tire. Janelle will bring the tire up here. And uh, we got a sternum bar, so she'll just sit the tire up on top of the sternum bar there. Yeah. Just watch your fingers, Janelle, just hold right here. Yeah. Give that a good slam there. You can feel it's locked. Now when you go to release it, you should feel a little bit of a snap. See, like that. That's just about right. If you gotta, if you gotta take your head gate and you gotta snap it hard, you need to take your WD-40 dry lube as your, your lock, and especially a shoot. I've seen them stiffen up, uh, grab really hard within six months out in, the, out in the sun and the dust. Take your WD-40 dry lube, put it on a rag, and all that does is take a bit of a bit of friction off. And I just want to point out, if, you, if you're watching this video and you feel your head gate is not performing like what you see, Please don't hesitate, call our client care team. They have uh, virtual locking cells, head gates, head holders, all set up right there in the showroom. They can FaceTime you live and they'll walk you right through it. Don't, don't remain frustrated. So just to recap that, Janelle, just hold that tire. Give it a good slam. And then you'll, you'll be able to feel that snap. That snap, that, that's just about right. If there's absolutely zero snap, that's something to watch out for too. It's likely you got, if you oil or grease the shaft, it's a guarantee you're gonna run into trouble because you just, you've overcome the friction. You gotta remember this is a friction lock. So that's why we recommend dry lube because it, uh, it helps it from snapping too hard, but yet it's not uh, such a powerful lubricant like, like an oil or grease. So that's, that takes care of that. Thanks, Janelle. So this here handle here, this is what operates your squeeze. Here, you, you, you may not even be aware of it, but say you're uh, doing whatever you need to do on the animal, don't stand, don't put your foot there because if, as that opens there, that becomes a, a pinch point, you can see. So it's just something to be aware of. Don't use that as a footrest. And this is the same thing. It's pushed to close and pulled open, okay? Now, I want you to notice how easy this squeeze is, okay? Now, I know there's a lot of squeezes out there that aren't that easy. And what we've found over the years is that WD-40 is your best friend with this chute. I'm not saying there's not other lubricants out there. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. It's just that everybody is familiar with WD-40. It's readily available. It migrates very well into all the cracks. So if your squeeze is feeling too stiff, it could be your lock on your shaft. It's a, if there's a real chatter, well, the same thing. Just put a bit of dry lube on a rag and, and that should that should solve that. But your squeeze over time with dust and dirt and all the rest of it, if it feels or it looks tougher than what you see here, take all your pivot points. These are all nylon bushings, so they're, they don't need to be greased, but like I say, w, a little WD-40 goes a long ways on all these, all these pivot points. Soak them good, then just take your chute and just work it back and forth. And then another thing, when I'm using this squeeze, I always prefer, like I say, it's only personal preference, but I'm just letting you know how I use it. I've used this chute for a lot of years. I always pull back like this. I just find there's a lot less strain and then you're, you're more able to take advantage of your body weight. And while we're talking about lubrication, all our uh, handles on our access doors are just twist to open. As you twist them, it, uh, it pulls back on the latch. They're over molded with plastic to reduce, reduce noise, but they're a fairly high tolerance part so that there's not too much movement. It's important that if these get stiff that you lube them up well with WD-40. That's, that's important because 
you want to be, there's something to be very aware of here. I want to make a special point of it, that if, if your latch is not moving freely, like you see there, it may be when you shut that door that it might not come back and fully engage. And that can create a very, very dangerous situation. If you got a big bowl in there, there's a tremendous amount of pressure. That door could fly out and really hurt you. So please make sure that your latches are well lubricated and, and working good so that they'll, they'll easily and fully engage when you shut the doors. Same goes for the that door. Exactly the same type of latch. Rail to shut your door like that. Don't grab right here because the margin is such that you're gonna, I, I can fit my knuckles in there, but it's fairly tight. And keep your fingers out of here because as you turn the door, that margin tightens up and that could pinch the end of your fingers. And the other point I wanna make a, a strong point of is this, this is your rump bar. And uh, it's fiberglass, incredibly strong, and it's got uh, a rubber hose uh, coating it so that it's very quiet along with the plastic rump fingers. So what that's for is to, uh, a couple of things. One is if you have a rump bar in there, sometimes that cow wants to back right up to the back of the rolling door when you release her. And well then she's just that much harder to get out of the chute because she's just been caught. The other thing is you can use this for when you're uh, uh, castrating bulls or prey checking. But when that rump bar is in there, don't stand by the side of this rump bar. Because what you gotta remember is when an animal's in here, and even if you have the squeeze up, there's a certain amount of movement, and she can move that rump bar a little bit side to side, and uh, you can get nailed pretty good with that. So just don't stand to the side of it when it's in, uh, engaged behind an animal. We have our needle door. Now, if you're just giving neck injections, you may not, it's not always uh, necessary to even drop this bar. I'm quite able to give injections with that bar still there. But if you'd like to, you just push up on the thumb rack, you drop this bar down here, and then if you want to get access to the feet, you just lift the door and swing it to the side. But when you go to close the door, just it's not a good idea to grab the door there or you're gonna pinch your knuckles. Just grab it here, or you can even grab it with the handle and drop it like that. That makes for a nice, easy closing the door. And then there's a linch pin here. If you want to completely remove your door, you can do that. Otherwise, that's, uh, that's a safety thing. Keep the linch pin in there. Uh, the other thing is we also have a drop pin here. So that uh, connects both doors together. If you need to do an emergency exit, that ties the doors together like that. If a cow goes down, that's your emergency exit or side exit. And then your latch is there when you shut the door grab on the side of the door, don't grab right here. Or if you got, you got bigger hands, you'll, uh, you, you'll, you'll also pinch your knuckles there. And your access doors, they are reversible, just so that you're aware of that. And then here, keep your, uh, your uh, fingers out of here because if you open the door like that, you're not gonna cut them off, but you're gonna pinch them pretty hard. 